and welcome to the Confound Millennial, starring Steven Sturvin Michaels and Ryan Diamonds. Yeah, point the right direction, please. It really annoys me when you do that. I'm kidding. I love you. And featuring special guest Eva Marie of Eva Under Fire. Hello, Eva. How are you doing today? Evening. What's up, guys? How are you? We're doing pretty good. We are doing uh, a lot better than we were last time that you and I spoke. Oh, okay. I don't know uh, if you remember that, but about about a year ago, we uh, did a podcast and I never got to release it because I ended up living out of my car about a week later. <laughs> I had no idea. I do remember that podcast interview from a while ago. I know that we, it was, you know, I think when we were first starting to tour, was it about the same time last year? Um, I think it was sometime in September. It might have been. Okay. It was still, um, I think we were, I remember what tour we were on. I think we were on the skillet tour, but yeah, that's wild, man. I had no idea. Well, I'm so glad to see that you're doing much better now. Yes. And yeah, that does make sense. Uh, Cause I think I remember telling you about how I uh, got to meet skill at one time and me and uh, his, the lead singers, John, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was a uh, real emo back in the day. So we traded makeup tips. That's amazing. <laughs> He's, he is famous for guy liner occasionally. I think, I don't think he wears it as much now, but definitely used to have guy liner back in the day. <laughs> That's great. But now we have Diamonds as a co-host. Diamonds, Eva, Eva Diamonds. Hello, hello. So, Eva, yeah. um, you know, usually I throw people off guard, you know, uh, just by asking, tell us a little bit about yourself. But then the other day I had a job interview and they said that, and I was like, you know what? That's the worst question to ever ask anybody. I want to be more direct panic. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, it's like, who am I? Right. <laughs> I mean, I can put on the sales pitch for you. I mean, I, I sing for a band. I'm into therapy. I, I love the fact that we're getting ready to go on tour again, which is going to be great. Got a lot of cool music coming up. So uh, I'm here to tell you all about it. Nice. So let's start off with the band. Um, Eva Under Fire, you are Eva. Uh, currently, right now, you're not under fire. Um, but uh, so when... When did the band start? How did uh, you get where you are now? And uh, just tell us a little bit about that. You know, a little yeah, history it's, lesson. Yeah. It's a, it's a really fun story. I like watching people's faces when I tell them how old school we are. Um, because we got together about seven years ago now. And we were all kids in the local scene. Like, we all played in different like rock band projects and the local bar scenes and stuff. So that's how we met. And um, we've all, I think, played individually with each other's other bands before we formed this one. <laughs> um, so, you know, it started off as a true blue pipe dream. You know, we, we thought we were kind of done with music. And then one day my guitar player hit me up hey you're not doing anything no well why don't you come back and jam we miss it you know okay cool nothing serious you know and immediately we wrote um like betrayer and then until forever and then a couple other songs that we we still kind of keep around to this day and have been some of our faves um and we were like okay we, we really have to give this one more shot like we could we kind of got you know, a little bit more years of wisdom under our belt, right? We could figure out how to make this like a big deal. Um, and turns out we met our producer and he had some cool ideas about how we should introduce ourselves. So we sent an unsolicited email to Better Noise Records and we actually landed a deal. <laughs> so now uh, from an unsolicited email and a band from 
the middle of nowhere, basically. I mean, we're not from New York or LA. So everybody's like, where are you from? Southeast Michigan. You're like, where? Detroit. It's, it's like, you know, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then they're like, oh, no way. You don't have any weapons, do you? And we're like, we, it's not like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was, it was kind of a dream come true, really, in that way. Nice. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's really fun hearing that you just, uh, start out with a unsolicited email to better noise because I don't remember if I ever sent them one or not, but I just remember randomly getting one about you one day. Yeah. And then, uh, I wrote them back this year about, uh, having a second chance. And then what do you know, the second chance is with you again. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. I, I mean, we've given ourselves so many chances. You get, you gonna, I think the name of the game is really just how many times can you get up? The world's always going to knock you down. Like there's always going to be something and it's probably going to come in quick succession, but it's constantly about the way we get back up. And I think, you know, you've seen that in your personal walk. I've seen that in my personal walk. Diamonds is not an over there like, yup. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that's, that's, you know, how it all, how you get what you want. Exactly. So um, we're going to, you know, transition back and forth a little bit here because, uh, you know, by the time of this release, it is uh, May mental health awareness month. And you mentioned briefly a minute ago that, um, you're into therapy. You are a therapist yourself, right? Correct. Yeah. A licensed therapist. Not like when I call diamonds and I'm just like, Hey man, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey friend, I need a therapy session, right? Yeah, no, I do that to some of my own people in my circle. Um, but yes, no, I actually, I have a, a license in the state of Michigan, um, probationary licensed. I'm kind of new here, but this is my third year in the field. I really love it. Nice. Uh, what is that? How does that, I don't know. I got so many questions about it. I don't know what to do because, uh, you know, I, I, uh, this podcast is about three primary things, music, magic, the gathering, not like witchcraft. Uh, nice. We're real big nerds here and mental health. Cool. cool. And since we've come back, we haven't gotten to talk too much about mental health. And I'm just, I, I don't know. It's very important to me. And I'm glad that we get to start this month out with somebody like you that is both a therapist and writes music that you can tell, um, you know, mental health is at the forefront of a lot of your songs as well. It certainly is. Um, I mean, I've, I've been at either end of the couch. I've been in the therapist seat and I've been at the, the client seat. And then I use music as my, therapy as well, right? My lyricism is something that I go to for my own story and catharsis. Um, it is really cool that, you know, rolling into Mental Health Awareness Month, um, I've gotten wonderful podcast interviews such as you guys. Give me another shot here. Um, and talking about stuff like this is so meaningful to me because it, it, it truly does align with my walk as a musician also. Um, <laughs> I started out in this world, like, I just want a meaningful connection with other humans, right? That was really my whole goal. So I said, well, how can I do that? And I, I've always loved music and always loved singing. So I said, well, I, I get that from music. Uh, I guess the other way I could do that would be to go and be a therapist. So like one of those has to work out, right? And then the universe laughed at me and gave me both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, here you go, figure it out. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. okay, sure sure we're just gonna we're just gonna do it and um so far it's been this wonderfully crazy just sort of unique path um like for example we're getting ready to release all this new music and uh mental health awareness month is here and so loudwire has asked me to be a guest columnist in their loudwire like online publication for mental health awareness month because i'm a therapist and a musician and they just thought that's so wild like 
can you write about this? I said, yeah, sure. So they said, well, what topics are you, are you interested in? I gave them like four, expecting them to pick one. And they were like, cool. Can we release each of those like weekly? <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, cool. Like this is, the, I mean, it's just, it's just a massive, it's such a weird world. I'm telling you to you guys and all your listeners to pick, pick yourself up as many times as you can and keep, keep getting restarted. Cause like, it'll figure itself out. This world is weird. And sometimes you'll get opportunities that you like never even envisioned maybe in the opportunities that hadn't even existed before you came along. It's wild. And, you know, um, one thing I'm going to mention is, uh, you know, we stopped uh, last year around September, and this is our fourth episode back. So we were, you know, it was still, people weren't really on tour yet. People were gearing up, but people weren't sure if, there was going to be more COVID lockdowns or not. And I know the mental health crisis, at least in America, if not the entire world, just went through the roof with the uh, lockdowns and all of that. Uh, as a therapist, do you see, and also, well, you haven't gone back on tour yet, have you? We've right. been out. Yeah. Since then we were on a tour following the skillet tour. We got on tour with uh, theory and we were out with them until December. And then, um, this coming, and then we got offered shipwrecked. We played shipwrecked. Which was nice. bad. Oh my gosh. Shipwrecked. Uh, I'm in love. And then, um, this year we, we got, uh, offered our upcoming tour, which is nothing more asking Alexandria and a tray. Crazy. Yeah. So, so we've been we've been continuing, yeah. But it's 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 really crazy to me to see, yeah, that that dichotomy play out. Some people are very very hesitant to get their life back to you know any semblance of normalcy, and then other people are really they've been just waiting for it at the gate. You know, they're ready. You think uh, that people are doing a lot better nowadays as a whole uh, without the lockdowns, being able to go back to their concerts, which a lot of people view as their own form of therapy and just kind of get back to a sense of normalcy. Yeah. You know, I can't really speak for, you know, all of the medical reasons why all of this needed to happen in the first place. Right. But what I can tell you is that humans are gregarious creatures. We have always been tribal. We've always needed other people so just the isolation in and of itself, I mean, you think about how we punish people in, in imprisonment, incarceration, solitary confinement, you know, that that's enough to drive people mad. So when you take humans on a grand scale, on a worldwide scale like this and try to separate everyone from other humans, it doesn't go well. People, people really have a hard time. I mean, I can't tell you the influx of of you know substance abuse and depression and anxiety i mean and these aren't just you know small issues we're talking like major depressive disorder panic disorder um you know people are looking at the television with a, a clicker on there tracking how many deaths i mean how long do you think you can subject people to that sort of data and expect them to just be fine you know i can speak for myself and say, uh, you know, 2020, when all of that happened, uh, that was the year I relapsed after three and a half years of being, mm. uh, alcohol free. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, my fans know this, that ended in incarceration <laughs> for a little bit mm -hmm. there. Sure. And, you know, it would just, it was not a fun time. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, you lose yourself. Mm hmm. And, I know a lot of people, you know, because I ended up going to a rehab for a little bit there. I know a lot of people that lost their, lost their minds, lost their lives, lost a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not saying that anything political or saying that the lockdowns weren't necessary, but, I, but saying just humans weren't built for that. No, I agree with you a thousand percent. No one was ready for the fallout. And, um, and I'm just so glad to see people coming back together again, people being able to go to 
uh, concerts, especially like I, I hate it. I live, I moved uh, after all of that happened up to the middle of nowhere, Kentucky. And there's rarely any concerts that hmm. I like, you know, <laughs> there's country galore, but <laughs> right. There just Not a lot no of options outside here. of that. <laughs> right. But it, um, the first time we got back to the stage, I cried. Like the first time that I saw, and I didn't care, masks, vaccine card, whatever they had to show, there was 1,200 people in that venue. And I was like, oh, there's 1,200 people in this venue. And, you know, I was like freaked out, you know, and it just, it was such a beautiful sight to me. It felt like coming home. It felt like coming home. Right. Uh, when I got to see one of my favorite bands, uh, one of them just happened to come by uh, about an hour away from here. And I got all sorts of emotional just being able to be in that energy. Yeah. And speaking of the energy, I saw you get really excited when you were talking about ship rocked. Yeah. <laughs> Why Man. don't you tell us a little bit about that? Cause your face lit up when you started thinking about that. It's okay. You just described, you know, when you kind of got emotional, the, the band that you loved kind of came through and it was just to be back in that energy. Right. For us as a, as a band touring artists, um, we're new here. Right. So whenever you leave a venue, whenever we leave a venue, we, we want to see if we've got, you know, we want to see smiling faces, but we also want to see if there's like those handful of those diehard fans that, like you said, get emotional when you guys come through because it's just, it becomes that family kind of, you know, it's it's rock and roll, man. You know, it's, it's like the pit rules, right? You, you know, somebody falls in the pit, you pick them up, right? It's just, only rock music crazies understand this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, but it's, it's that energy, you know, like we can all freak out in a room together, but the minute that someone has a real problem, everybody is attentive and they want to help, you know? And I love that. I love that heart that that rockers have. So when we got on Ship Rocked, it was like thousands of them on a floating barge. Just this massive, it was like the best concert you've ever been to for days with like the same people who are just all best friends. And they're not just best friends because like they've known each other. Like some of them, they're all ship rockers and they've been there for like years. But most of them are best friends just because you got on the boat. <laughs> so they're like, there's, we were um, what they consider noobs. Yes. So we had noob signs that we, and then we got adopted because some of the older generation of ship rockers, at least they've been on one ship rocked before, right? They came through and was like, oh, you've never been here. Here, we'll show you around. We're adopting you. Come with me, come with me, right? And they just take you around all these like cool and there's like activities. People have crazy massive um, like field days on the, the ship deck. You know, they have like uh, rope wars and different other things and like biggest belly flop and like cool stuff that people just like randomly participate in and a lot of the bands are just milling around you know having fun with all of these people that are on the ship it's just a giant vip party which is amazing and um there was like i've never we've never been treated so well you know and then on top of that there was uh two different destinations they were both in mexico and we got a chance to just get off the boat and like go hang out in Mexico. And like there you're on like a resort, basically, just on the beach where they stop because it's a cruise ship stop. You know, these are all um, it's like Carnival Cruise Line that they rent these boats from for these massive events. And it's just the most beautiful atmosphere you've ever seen, man. It was and then and then like, like Lamb of God headlined the deck stage. I, it, what you know what i'm saying and then like he's climbing the trellis on the deck stage it started raining and they were like oh no is lamb of god gonna gonna you know get rained out no no because lamb of god made sure that they didn't get rained out it was just it was like I, you know because it's january so when you leave port from texas and you go to you know mexico is like 80 degrees and sunny paradise for most of the year, but like coming back to the States, it's not like that anymore. It gets pretty chilly on the deck. Um, 
so it was just like in one of those transition phases, uh, they just so happened to be headlining the deck stage. They didn't care. It was cold. It was rainy. Nobody cared. Everybody had a party. It was an amazing time. It was the best, like, you know, performance. I mean, Corey Taylor last minute just decided that he was going to play on the ship. Um, and then we like get, you know, us as artists, we get, um, you know, different dining area for the artists that play. So I walk in and there's Corey Taylor. <laughs> like, Hi. And he goes, oh, hey, what's up, man? Because he, I knew the people, one of the people he was sitting with from our theory tour. So I waved and I didn't realize that he was sitting with Corey. And I walk over and I, and, you know, Corey's like, oh, hey, what's up? You know, you know, Jed. And I said, yeah, yeah. And we were just on the theory tour. He's like, oh, I'm Corey. You know, and these are my buddies, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and in my brain, I'm thinking, not as though every single person on the ship doesn't know exactly who you are. <laughs> like, yeah. like you're very cute. Hey. to assume that we don't know who you are. <laughs> but that was nice. Hey, I'm Corey. <laughs> what's up? I know you have no idea who I am, but what's up? <laughs> right. So it was just, it was, uh, it was really cool. Everybody there was super chill. Everybody there was such a fun time. Um, highly recommend Ship Rock. Nice. And, you know, it's, it's kind of funny you mentioned Lamb of God. Um, earlier today, I sent out a meme to all my metalhead friends. I had seen uh, this has nothing to do with anything, but I saw a meme earlier today that was uh, a church had used their logo for their Easter play. I saw this. I saw this. I was like, oh, they did it. But it, and it's funny because me as a churchgoer, I'm like, you know, I'm like laughing. But it was hilarious because they had no idea, you know. And I think it was all like they're, they're tongue in cheek and they're like not Christian at all. But right. they're amazing yeah. in concert. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, I don't, you know, uh, I don't go much anymore just because when I moved, you know, it was COVID times. You can't mm -hmm. you couldn't really find anywhere to go. And I just got out of the habit, but I used to be a drama team leader and stuff. So I, everybody I sent that to were church going metal heads. And they're like, awesome. no. Oh, that's so funny. That makes the meme so much better that you sent it to other like fellow church people <laughs> who yeah, also like, found uh, it hilarious. <laughs> we were homeschoolers in a praise band when we were teenagers and you know all we listened to was evanescence and paramore and we thought we were going to be the next big thing i love it that's i mean i get it <laughs> i'm still trying to do that and we're way past them days <laughs> yeah so um back to uh the music a bit um so you just released a new ep yes uh well semi new I guess, uh, two songs that have been released not too far ago. And then the most BA cover of separate ways I've ever heard. Yes. So it was definitely, you're, you're correct to call me out on our rebranding of the songs. It was definitely a way the EP was a way to reintroduce songs that were released, um, kind of during COVID times where, you know, this, this, stretched on longer than anybody was anticipating. So it kept continuing to push back release dates for the, the full album, um, which we're still figuring out. Um, but we're touring, so I know it's going to be soon. Um, you know, because bands, it's like the chicken or the egg, you know, can you release and not tour to support it? Can you, you know, is that a, even a good idea? What, what do you, do you use the release to get the tours or do you get the tours and then substantiate the release because you've got these, these fans now that you've gone and met and done the groundwork for. Um, so we're still kind of trucking up that battle. Um, but meantime, we were like, Hey, look, we got this cool other stuff that we can release. And the label's like, Oh yeah. And we are like, yeah, we play this cover live and it slays. And they're like, Hmm send it to me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we sent them the several ways and they were like, yes, yes. Put her in, put her in. Right. So then we, we released, um, re-released the two songs that were originals blow and comatose. And then also gave fans like a new shiny thing in the meantime, as a, as a thank you for waiting. And, uh, like as soon as, as soon as the intro started playing on separate ways, I was like, 
I cannot wait till it gets to the Stop. end. It's just that. Whoa. Yes. And you just killed it. You killed the whole song. It was Thank great. You. Thank you. I loved, I loved doing that one. Um, you know, it was a strange thing for us to not be able to play live right when this whole first thing came about so we ended up playing a bunch of different covers for a friend of ours who's a, a local promoter um she was just doing like a food truck by the detroit river because it, you know there's like a restaurant out there and people didn't have anything to do yeah <laughs> right um so she was like, I'd love it if you guys could come jam, but it's probably going to be like, you know, an easygoing crowd. So if you guys can learn some acoustic covers, it'd be great. We ended up learning five hours of covers <laughs> and showing up like every Friday. <laughs> so uh, we had a fun time. Um, but that's how we coped with it. And one of them that just stuck around was Separate Ways. Nice. What is, uh, you know, if you were to pick another cover that you think you guys do just as well on which one would you pick not saying you know that it's going to come out on anything but what would be your choice oh are you even allowed to say anything like that yeah yeah i mean because i don't i don't know what's going on with um you know down the road here right so like we we don't have anything else that we've recorded per se um that we've turned in like professionally, like we've recorded with buddies of ours and demoed certain things out and just kind of like, you know, to see how it would sound. Um, one of them that I really like doing was uh, Black Sabbath, War Pigs. <laughs> also super relevant for the time, right? Which is why we originally had started to cover it. Um, it's just, I don't know that it ever belongs in a commercial space because it's like a seven minute long song. <laughs> I don't know who would play it. Like radio would have to fall in love with us first before they would be like, really this one, <laughs> you know? Uh, Cause that's like double the amount of space that a lot of people get when they go to radio. But um, that one was really cool to do. And it's honestly one I, I didn't expect to have fun with because um, I'm honestly like classic rock was my parents' generation. And I always felt like that was their music but it never felt like something that I personally could own. I had a lot of respect for but it didn't ever feel like my music, you know? So I never really, I, I heard melodies that I recognized, but I didn't ever really learn it or try to sing them for myself. Um, firstly, because I just probably never thought about it. A lot of that was like very male dominated vocally. So I didn't, you know, and it wasn't until we were trying to like throw out every cover idea under the sun to fill these like five hour time slots for our friend <laughs> in Wyandotte, Michigan. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Julie. <laughs> you know, we really had to do some self-exploration to figure that out. Um, but we had fun with it, and that was one of them that I really enjoyed playing. Nice. And, you know, uh, I never really got that much into classic music either. It's my go-to radio station if I've got to put on radio. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if the Bluetooth ain't working, you know. But uh, the only the only classic music that i ever got into was like the doobie brothers and dire straits because my dad was a die hard like he didn't listen to any music that wasn't christian besides them two. Oh wow that's so funny like that's cool though because like you you know heard this and like fell in love with it and it was just a little bit off of what you would typically hear but still like just good music you know good for the soul so that's fun Mm -hmm. A lot of the people that I've learned that like they they got into classic rock music is all of the, my guitar player friends, you know, a lot of my guitar player for like Rob learned the guitar because of Metallica, like he just thought they were the coolest. And so he started picking it up and playing and they they have a lot of really cool riffs too, right? They were interesting to listen to and like super like in thrash when you're a kid, right? Super fast, you know, so you want to learn how to play it because it just seems like it'd be fun to play. Um so like that kind of stuff, I know a lot of I know a lot of musicians who appreciate classic rock way more than than I think I have. Um, I I grew up on it, but it wasn't something I didn't really start owning my own like what I loved in rock music until new metal hit. When new metal came around, I was like, hmm. <laughs> well, I I don't know if I'm cool enough to like this, but I really like this. 
right? It was like Lincoln Park, Hybrid Theory, and like Corn, and you know all those guys. Um, when in Limp Biscuit, even um, Chris is a giant Limp Biscuit fan, giant Limp Biscuit fan, and then that him and Corey both are in love with Deftones. So those are sort of wild and crazy influences. Um, and then I show up as a '90s kid who listened to a lot of pop music, trying to keep up with Christina Aguilera and Alicia Keys my whole life. Um, but also having a love for Kill Switch and Gage. So I don't know. I was confused, <laughs> but it worked out. <laughs> that's uh, that's actually pretty great. <laughs> Just I was confused. But yeah. like with all of you, I don't know, like uh, you guys have such a great sound, though. It's it's like a little bit classic, a little bit modern, and it's not quite metal. It's just rock, but it's so unique still even with that mm -hmm. and uh i don't know i've been you know getting ready for this episode i've been binging you guys for the past couple of days and it's definitely gonna stay on my playlists thank you you've, oh we uh, love changed that. the algorithm a little bit actually it's no longer only dance gavin dance it's you guys <laughs> as well now <laughs> We're messing it all up. We've confused the Spotify. We're confused whatever you use for playlisting. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I love I love to hear that. Thank you, um, because it it's we wanted the album uh, when it comes out is gonna have like that same blend. There's a lot of really cool riffs that are on there. Um, it's good, hard hitting rock and roll, but then there are other things that are a little lighter, a little poppier, um, but still have a really good production level. Uh, it's just really cool. You know, I explore a lot of high notes. Um, I remember my producer telling me what high note I was supposed to hit. I thought he was crazy. And then we got it done. So <laughs> it's just, as a matter of fact, if you go, go and listen to Unstoppable, that that's the song it was in. I was like, I'm supposed to do what? <laughs> my vocal cords are going to snap, bro. <laughs> he was like, warm up and get in there. You know, it's like a drill sergeant. I'm like, fine, calm down. <laughs> we got that's it done. Funny. But, uh, you know, we're going to start wrapping things down a little bit. But I do want to say one thing. Um, I mean, we're definitely going to go over to Diamonds and see if he has anything to say because he's been quiet. But first, y'all are I saying, to say, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I love it. It's great. <laughs> I'm just here for the Diamonds paycheck. is the best fan of the show. He <laughs> just gets the front row seat. <laughs> but um, look, I know. You don't get to decide this. I don't get to decide this. Nobody gets to decide this. But dang, I would die to see you, Diamante, and Lauren Babick slash Red Handed Denial on tour one today. Ooh. In Kentucky. That would the in Kentucky. The that you don't forget about Kentucky. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So, you know, funny story. We actually, we opened Kentucky. for Diamante like a long time ago. This was before COVID when we had just gotten signed. Um, She came through on a tour and did like an off date at one of the bars at, nearby us. And we were like, we will open for you. And, and she was super sweet, just, and, and very, I mean, her show was entertaining. I mean, she definitely has high energy, um, mm -hmm. which I love that, but it was so cool to open for her on like a small stage. And now like she's doing massive arena tours. We're doing uh, lots of tours, killing it with the, the theater scenes. Hopefully we get an arena tour of sharing. Um, Lauren Babic is new to me, but I, I know I've heard a, a song or two from her and um did, am i wrong did she do like a massive cover yeah she um Billy she's Eilish kind of part it? of hallisane's crew yes 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 that's where i know her from okay yeah i think they they remade a billy eilish song that i really like so um, i knew her from her band a uh, buddy of mine had opened up for her one time but uh and diamante had been on the show and then like two weeks like you know she was relatively big mm -hmm. but two weeks later she uh you know she released her album like a day later and then two weeks later she had two million views on it already oh that's awesome and we're like wow okay yep wow. you're like well and we just witnessed what it's like to just overnight it <laughs> you know that's i like great. to say uh that uh we were like rubbing the buddha's belly for that you know yep just uh Perfect. 
rub my bald head and a little bit of luck, you next biggest star. Perfect. Uh, you can spread some of that our way. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and we're going to cut to diamonds and see so if he talk- has anything cool to say. We talked about music. We talked about mental health. Tell me what kind of magic you're into. Tell me what do you do that's nerdy. Oh. Do I have to? It's really embarrassing. No, okay, I maybe don't it's not have to, but we ask I'm a, I'm everyone. A, um, so I am the young adult uh, novel reader of vampire series. To that's great. A, to a you read? Like, yeah, I do. I do read. Yeah, I read. I, you know, but I love. I love all of the like Marvel. Come on, who What's who doesn't that? right? Like That's who doesn't love Marvel? You know, mostly when I was. <laughs> Cause I hang out with a bunch of dudes. Right. So anytime they get to embarrass like their friend, that's a, a girl. Right. And Cause I'm sappy and I'm a romantic. Right. So they're like, what new vampire story are you reading now? Hmm? What new, what new loves of what broken hearted 18 year old is in this book? And I'm like, shut up. He's Her sparkly. name is Lauren. <laughs> right? like, so anyway, uh, that's me. And, but I really, um, we're all, nerds in some way in this group i mean i i really think you have to be in order to be a musician i mean what musician is not like a gearhead right like they're always some kind of nerding out about how they fix their you know their guitar is somebody else is learning how to do this other recording thing someone else just ordered a new case for this and they think it's all shiny you know it's just you know <laughs> so um we all have our respective nerdisms uh, mine is definitely vampire books and marvel you need something to inspire you. Yep. That's the thing Should a lot of people don't understand when we ask about, you know, what do you nerd out about? Everybody's immediately like, well, I don't like Spider-Man. I've never played Pokemon. No, 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 no. What do you nerd out about? Right. Because like, everybody's got something, whether it's, you know, collecting shiny guitars and never playing any but the one. Or- I rebuild transmissions. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. you can nerd out about anything. Exactly. And I'm mm. sorry, but uh, fitness people, that includes you too. You guys like obsess over like all of the little like nutrient things. You guys got some new power thing you do and some new like way to lift stuff. Like I've seen people nerd out about a lot of things that people aren't traditionally considering nerdy. But I love that. Nerd I out. think it just, yeah, I think it just means that you're passionate about what you're doing. Maybe um, that's what we should say. What are you passionate about? <laughs> no, I like your I like your phrasing because it makes people uncomfortable. <laughs> made me uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, do I have to tell you about my vampire stories? <laughs> That's a really hey, good one. I yeah. Told you before we started, diamonds was going to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, he did. He did too. He went into like the very last minute, just when I was thinking you were like not somebody I needed to worry about. You were like, oh yeah, what about this question? And I'm like, oh, it's the Sneaky. only thing you said the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a chance. But yeah, that's okay. Sure. It's not my show. I'm just here for the laugh track. Yep, I like it. You did an excellent <laughs> job, sir. Thank an you. Excellent Thank job. You. Thank you. So, uh, where do fans need to go to check out uh, your upcoming tour dates, merch, any of that kind of stuff? Yeah. Um. So we have a website, EvaUnderFire.com. And it's got a link to all of our socials and stuff there too, right? Uh, We're on everything. Instagram and TikTok are my two muses. Um, You can also, like, new cool thing that we're doing, we're on Patreon now, which I thought uh, for, like, a bunch of the weird minute 30 second videos of us like walking through the backstages of venue type stuff where we don't, you know, because everything's got an algorithm. You don't really have a space to share it on any other platform. Um, But I find that, like, the really invested fans that like want to help us out. They, you know, they do the subscription thing, but they get a lot of really cool exclusive content. I had such a backlog on my phone. I'm so happy to share it. Finally have a space for it. So we're on Patreon too, if you're interested. And links to all that in the description. Uh, make sure you check out Eva of Eva under fire. If uh, they end up anywhere near you, it, I'm sure it's a show worth going to. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you guys really don't want to miss nothing more asking Alexandria and to you. I've seen all of them. I've been a fan of all of them for years. So this is going to be a really cool tour. Probably one of our heaviest tours too. So we got some cool ideas to kick it up a notch. If you've seen us before, you will not have seen the same show. 
I don't nice. listen to nearly enough of Trey you, but like I do have uh lead sails and a paper anchor that I just put on repeat sometimes when I want to relive the year of 2007. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So our new stuff is good too. Like their old school fans are like, they went commercial. And I'm like, dude, Social they're trying to take letters. over the world. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it. I don't care. If, if you if it's catchy and everybody else says you sold out, whatever, it's catchy. All right. This has been the Confound Millennial starring Woo! Steven Sturvin Michaels. And diamonds and featuring Eva, <laughs> Eva under fire. Ready, ready, fire baby, I'm about to go.